I am inspired by the word geography. Geography, but in Nepali. In Nepali, we call geography Bhugol. Who means the earth? Gol means Ram. I'm inspired because we used to call geography Bhugol for thousands of years. And it was only recently in the last century that the Western world discovered that the world was round. We knew it thousands of years ago. Earth is another word that I take inspiration from. Earth in Nepali, apart from Prithvi, is the word called Jagat. Jagat means Josko Gatisa, something that has pace something that moves. From times immemorial, we knew that the world, the earth, used to rotate before the Western world discovered that the earth used to rotate. I take pride in this knowledge because this is a knowledge not of the past, but it is of the present. And why should we think otherwise and always ape the West? Yes, there are a lot of things of the West that we need to learn from. They have made amazing strides. But if you look into your own history, if you look into your own thought processes, I think we have a wonderful civilization before that as a country in Asia. And other Asian countries share this similar thoughts and similar thought processes. We are no less than anybody else. We must believe in ourselves that we can deliver. And one of the ways to deliver is to get correct education and to be educated properly. Education is not only books, not only content. Content is required, yes. But apart from content, you also need other skills to survive. Nepal has made amazing progress and that has been justified by Professor Hans Rosling who was here in Kathmandu a month ago. He is a celebrated statistician and his services is taken throughout the world. And when he was here, he made comparisons through data and statistics that Nepal has progressed amazingly in the social sphere. Social side, we have done great progress. But what we have lacked is entrepreneurship. What we have lacked is to create wealth. The last census of 2011 in Nepal shows that 63% of the population is under the age of 30 years of age. We are a young nation, and tomorrow the nation will belong to you. Today we have leaders who are aged wisely, but they will go biologically also. Tomorrow, the world for Nepal is for the young people. And there's amazing opportunity in Nepal. You look at it, you'll see opportunity. We have been trained, we have been educated in a different way earlier on, where we have been taught to, we have been taught to become an employee. No longer now. We must take pride in becoming an employer. What stops us from becoming an employer? Why only seek employee? Why that employee-seeking mentality is important, no longer. We need to take strides in becoming entrepreneurs ourselves and take that stride forward that is possible in Nepal. There are two kinds of people in Nepal. One kind who thinks positively and the one kind who thinks negatively. It's up to you to think where you want to belong to. If you think Nepal is negative, then you'll not stay in Nepal. You'll see everywhere and see that, oh, Nepal is bad. But even in load shedding, you can find opportunity. If you have an entrepreneurial mind, you can possibly sell generators, inverters, solar systems. Why not? I'm in the business of consulting, training, as well as we look into sustainable water management, 
rainwater harvesting, wastewater solutions, we are into waste to energy. We are looking at problems of pollution created by poultry. Poultry waste to electricity is a possibility. We are exploring that. Why not? When you come to be educated, you should come with a mind that is open to take in different things. I still remember my own MBA days in the early 90s when I did it from Calcutta. I still remember my professor's words that business management is a process in which you transform, you not just change. Changing a little does not really make sense. You need to transform. Business management schools is like a place where a donkey comes in, and, and if the donkey goes out as a beautiful donkey, the donkey remains a donkey. Education institution must become a transformational place where you come in as a donkey and you go out as a horse. That's transformation. And it is up to you to live that transformation and believe in yourself that you can do it. Nothing can stop you. And it is possible. I have been teaching for the past 14 years in different colleges. And one of the reasons that I go is to create that spark in the young minds that tomorrow Nepal can see somebody, a leader in yourself, who would come forward and transform this country. We have had internal conflicts. We have had difficult period. We are a young democracy. Yes, the pains are there, but the results will be great as well. My speciality is marketing. And Bishnuji asked me, why don't you speak a little bit on marketing? What I can tell you from this forum today is that we are a small company. We're doing, trying to do amazing work. What I can pledge from this platform today is that for those of you who have joined KSCM on this first semester, I can guarantee you, one of you, a job that after four years, our office will pay you 30,000 rupees once you pass out. So one job is guaranteed. But I would request that person to come with an entrepreneurial mindset that if you have an idea of your own, come to us, we'll explore and jointly work together. When I was offered the position to teach marketing at Kathmandu University School of Management, this was in the year 2001, I had finished my MBA for, for about six years on. And I remember one of my faculty saying that an MBA degree, not a BBA, an MBA degree should be given with a five-year expiry date. And I say, is this guy joking? We are working so hard. And this guy comes in and says that an MBA degree should be given with a five-year expiry date. But there was logic to it. Because when I started teaching, I took up the same book of Philip Kotler, the father of marketing. And I had two options. One was to pick up my notes from 1993 and teach the same thing again, or to pick up a new book. I took up the new book, which was the Millennium Edition. And therein I found that the author, Philip Kotler himself, had changed so much in his book that the old book was redundant because the market has changed so dynamically. By then, internet was becoming a reality. By then, consumer's taste had changed. By then, things have been so different. Marketing, I dare say, is that only faculty that brings in money to the company. Other faculty only spend the money. Marketing is a philosophy that you can embrace. And it looks into the needs and wants of an individual. And that wants, that needs is changing in Nepal as well. You as young people, your needs are changing. I can possibly vouch for everyone in this room to have a mobile phone set, be it a dumb phone or mostly a smartphone now. Back in our days, we didn't have one. As consumers, you are connected. You have more than 100 television channels streaming into your bedroom. Earlier, one cluster of household had a TV, and everyone, one of us used to go there and watch it. Now in a house, you have two television sets, three television sets. Our consumption patterns are changing. 
We need to understand what a generation gap is. Today, as product changes like a smartphone is, every year you see and watch that iPhone has launched a new version. iPhone 6 is coming out in September or October. Galaxy 6 is coming out. Samsung 5 is just a year old. We are in that age where things change dynamically, and marketing is the only faculty that can address that, can understand the changes of needs of the society and respond to it. No longer product marketing will work in Nepal because the consumers have changed. They have changed dynamically, their consumption patterns have changed dynamically, their thoughts have changed dynamically, their habits have changed dynamically, and the organization must respond to it correctly, then and there. It's an amazing science. I always tell my, jokingly tell my friends from the accounts background, that you only do debit and credit for the rest of your life, but we in marketing, we challenge ourselves every day because every new customer is a new challenge and we must address to it. Nepal has tremendous opportunities. As we were just discussing a little while earlier, we are so rich in natural resources. We look into hydropower. The potential is there and that potential has remained. Nothing has happened after that. That's because there was no forward thinking people who have come forward and said that, yes, I will do it. Yes, I will take the lead. And that is opportunity. Government not doing anything is an opportunity. Because if the government does it, then what is left for the private people to do? What is left for the entrepreneurs to do? There is so much to be done here. Be it IT, be it agriculture, be it health. You look around, you see dental clinics sprouting out like mushrooms. You see, look around, you see Montessori schools sprouting like anything. How did that happen? Because our society is changing. Look at how earlier a real estate, a house, used to be bought only by people who were 55 years and above. That's because earlier on, people used to work so hard, so much, that they used to accumulate all the wealth, and after they retire around that age, they get their provident fund. With that money, they used to buy a house. No longer now, with access to finance, with young people getting much more quicker into their promotion, yeah. that age has come down from 55 to 45 and even 35 now. People at 35, 30 to 35 age, years of age is aspiring to own a house. Earlier we used to live in a joint family where we had uncles and two uncles and everybody, their children together. Now no longer. We are living in a nuclear society where the husband and the wife, who is also working, wants only a two-bedroom flat. Therefore, the need for flats. Earlier when the real estate was to sell, it used to sell in bigger sizes. One ropani, two ropanis. Now it has come down to four annas because you have only two people in the family and possibly two kids. Earlier on, there used to be grandmothers who used to take care of the grandchildren, but no longer because the wives nowadays do not want to live with their mother in laws they want to have an independent life of their own. That society is changing, and it is marketing that's going to address that and see that now you can have flats, smaller size, which can be sold into the Nepali market. Once they get married, after a couple of years, they have a child. Wonderful, fantastic. After two years of having a child, they don't know what to do with the kid because they have to enter in the office. Right? Therefore, daycare centers become need of the hour. People leave the child even when there is nine months old, one year old. And if that service comes up, that is marketing. You need to address to the needs and requirements of the society. And therefore, you can make money as well. Our businesses is on the water and renewable energy side. And we see tremendous opportunity in the renewable areas as well. And that is important. And in an education system, what defines success? And it is very important for us Nepalese to understand that just content is not enough. A couple of years ago, there was a survey done amongst the top 10,000 graduates of the Stanford University. And they were asked, what are the parameters that make you successful today? Is it content or is it something else? Content means knowledge. 
and domain expertise. 10,000 of them were surveyed. And the response was amazing, startling. Only 12.5% said content. 87.5% said it is soft skills that is required. Just getting educated is not enough in today's world. You must have that power of communication. You must have those soft skills, interpersonal relations, to become a leader of your own. Those soft skills are very much required. And it is not for anything that Narayan Murthy, do you know Narayan Murthy? Of the Infosys fame, the IT mega company that was established, when he came back to take over the CEO role, he hired people. He needed 10 top CAs, and he said, okay, we are going to hire top 10 CAs. The minimum salary was 3.5 crores a year. Six months down the line, six of them had to be fired. And he wrote a letter to the CA Foundation, the CA organization, saying that, what kind of people are you producing who cannot write a proper report, who cannot communicate properly? They've just learned how to do the domain exercise, but they do not know people's skill. That, I would say, is the difference between a successful person and a person who just has a degree. Yes, those things are required, but it is very important that you know the content, you know your domain, very importantly. And it is important to understand that hard work is required. One of the stories that I always remember is of a one person who was walking in the morning for a morning walk, and he rests for a while, and then he sees on the side there was a caterpillar who was trying to come out of the cocoon. And he was watching that cocoon for some time. There was a lot of struggle by the cap caterpillar inside the cocoon to come out as a butterfly. And he said, let me help. So he tried to make that tip portion a little bit bigger, make a little bit hole bigger so that the butterfly can come out a little bit easier. As he did that, definitely, yes, the caterpillar inside pushed itself a little more. And he tried to open a little more. And then the butterfly came out. But as it came out, when it tried to spread its wings, it could not fly because it was deformed. We do not want deformed graduates in Nepal. We want people who does the hard work that is required. That process that the caterpillar takes to come out of that cocoon is the process that is required to become a butterfly. People only see and admire a butterfly, but it forgets the process that it goes through to become one. I'm sure that KCM will allow you that opportunity to transform yourself from a caterpillar to a butterfly.